guy who has the strongest core in here, right? Okay. Oh, DM. <laughs> I think all okay. three are going to say, well, I've got it, but uh, you want to yeah. do it? Yeah. I'll try it. Let's okay. Do it. Okay, so anyhow, let's, let's get to a place on the wall. Yeah, um, doesn't, doesn't really matter, whatever. Um, um, you want to do that red wall? That red wall, yeah, it'd be, it'd be fun. Oh, I forgot your first name again. Go. Joe? Yeah. Joe, this is Gary. How are you doing? Gary works with me. Hi, Gary. How's it going? You're Superman. Do you saw him, Gary? Okay, so uh, this exercise right here is for five specific sections of your body. One versus four, second, glutes and hips. Third is uh, thighs, fourth is calves, ankles, and feet, and uh, fifth is upper body and uh, shoulder rotation, mm -hmm. okay? So we had this guy right here volunteer because he's got such a strong core, and we're gonna see how he does with this, right? So what you're gonna do is you're kinda gonna get into like uh, a setup of a baseball stance like this, okay. and then you're gonna put your upper arms on your side mm -hmm. like that like that and you're gonna hold this one hand over the other okay. okay and then you're gonna rotate like this so you rotate against the tension uh, of this okay, but you're gonna be rotating with your body into your upper body into your upper arm okay okay and so what you're gonna do is you're going to tense your abs right mm -hmm. so I know that when you guys are working with uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten year olds, you're working with a bag of noodles, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not gonna understand right, what right. tense your abs mean. Mm -hmm. So make sure you stand up right there. Okay. Don't let me oh, push you over. Okay. Right? That's tensing your abs, right? right? right you right. feel that? Yeah. Okay. So when you get on here like this, you're going to tense your abs. If you don't, you're just we're just wasting time. Okay. okay? Tense your abs and you're gonna rotate this way as far as you can until your elbow gets even with your navel. Okay. Got it? Yeah. And then this way, like that. Hold it for three seconds. Here. Good. I want you to bend a little bit more. There you go, right there. Okay? Yeah. You got it. One. Whoa. Oh, you got it. Three Four. seconds. One, two, three. Release. Now make sure that you're you're turning as you bend your trunk against your upper upper body there, okay? Okay. That's you're just not doing this, right? Uh -huh. You're turning with this against this. Go ahead. Good. One, two, three. Do that four more times each side. Okay. Okay, good. Don't let me pull you against the wall. Make sure your abs are tight. Good. Turn. Again. Awesome. Good. Two more revolutions. Starting to feel your abs yeah. and obliques. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. All right, next part. Don't come away from the wall yet. Okay. okay. What we're going to do is you're going to tense your glutes, okay? You don't have to get into a posterior pelvic okay. tilt or anything, just tense, okay. right? Now with your right hip, turn that way. Turn into the, nope, yes. uh, not a baseball swing. Okay. It's just a, nope, fine. Yep. So you're going to be rotating exactly the same way your abs took you. Oh, okay. okay. So wait, yeah. here? Here, let me show you real quick. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's going to take you like that. Ah, uh, okay, okay. 
like that rather than like that. Okay. Oh, Remember, this isn't a baseball exercise. This is a this is a general core exercise of all the cores of, of all the joints in your body. Okay. Go ahead. There you go. Awesome. Hold it for three. Okay. Yeah. Good. Remember to tense your glutes. Good. Awesome. Revolutions. So the way we will correct that a little better if we're doing the camera, but we just have to rotate like this around his hip. Go ahead, go ahead. They're doing one more time. Good. Now don't come away from the wall. Good. Put your hand back up there. Good. Now I'm going to give you a break instead of having just your thighs and just your calves at either time. Mm -hmm. Now what I want you to do is tighten your, your uh, thighs and your calves mm -hmm. and rotate exactly the same way using the inner part yep. of your thighs and your ankle bones to turn. There you go. Good. Good. Turn. Yep. Yep. Turn oh, against turn. the resistance okay, okay. of that. Right? Good. Turn. Good. Okay, keep your hips exactly where they are and turn. Don't let it go this uh -huh. way. There you go, that's better. Good. Turn. Okay, still feeling that in your abs? Mm -hmm. Good. That's good for that. Okay, now pinch your entire upper body, mm -hmm. everything. Now with this shoulder blade, I just want you to rotate down and in, just like that. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, hold it for three. One, two, three. Relax and turn. One, two, three. Relax and turn. One, two, two, three. Relax and turn. One, 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 two, three. Relax and turn. One more. One, two, three. Relax and turn. And one, two, three. And relax. Okay? Good. Give me the machine mm -hmm. there. How'd that feel? Good. All right. Yeah, I felt it in my, my hips quite a bit, in my core. Yeah, it was good. Cool. So, just for the benefit of uh, exact um, uh, exact positions of the core, it would look like this. For the glutes, it would look like this. For the thighs, it would look like this. For the calves, it would look like this. And for the shoulders, it would look like this. Good. So, what would be the first thing that you would want to teach a hitter as far as hitting position? Like they're, the stance. they're here, mm -hmm. okay. So as far as uh, going up for the ball, going for the ball, yep. hips first. Okay. So I mean, maybe a timing mechanism, getting your hips through. Before okay. The so let's just going. work on the hip. Okay. okay. All right. So right hip, and you wanted to do what with the right hip? If it's a right-handed batter. Uh, I keep rotated. I keep their their leg their femur externally rotated. Yeah. I'm sorry. Or I keep their femur externally rotated. Uh huh. So okay. as they shift in the front foot then I can internally rotate into that momentum. Makes a lot of sense to me because that's exactly the same, same way with uh, golf as yeah. well, okay? So that would, that would look like this right here. Your 
you're yeah. keeping the hip externally rotated, right. right? And then the first move is like that. Yeah. That would be the first move, right? So doing that against the tension, and, and you guys know, like a box of rubber bands, right? You know, th then they feel that. And to boot, if they had one of these things at home, you wouldn't have to retrain them every single time that they come to this place, right? Okay, so external rotation. So did I learn that pretty well? Good. All right, then the next one. Next well, part. Kind of what you're doing that. As you shift your momentum yeah. and this internally rotates, that, that arm, first the scap loads against it, but then the arm comes down and connects to that hip. So that elbow goes to the hip, kind of like what you're doing there. Yep. And then that, that elbow rides that power through the zone. Good. So, so let's look at another plane of motion right now, okay? So here, here's your gun, right here. External rotation, mm -hmm. just like that, yeah. mm. right? Mm -hmm. Got it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, next thing is I'm going to assume is this part. Yeah. So they've already learned this, and they've already learned this, now they learn that. <coughs> that looked pretty good for a 68 year old. Mm -hmm. Okay, right? And then, and then what is the action of the next action? Front leg so starts to extend. Like What's that? So the front leg is in external rotation and, and as the hips rotating, it's extending into that position. Okay, that's the same, exactly the same as golf. Yeah. Unless you talk to the people that I'm talking to, and then and they're, and it's backwards to create more power, then that internally rotates. But I got you, All right? So here, like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So you're extending your front line. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Okay. So here's another one to work on. Exact. Can I have a back? Y'all have a bat? I'm doing it here. We're more pitchers than hitters. We got one. Yeah, that's fine. It's not going to be great. <clears throat> yeah, so it's, a, it's not a great one to hit with, but it's a yeah. <laughs> It could be a fungo, more all I can do. It's cracked out of every table. Yeah. All right? Front side, a firm front side, is exactly exactly the same as, as uh, golf. However, a lot of people say ba uh, golf swing is the same as baseball. That's for everybody that's never played baseball in their life, because the golf swing you have to to generate a lot of energy here. Baseball, you're there, you're already there, right? You can get a lot more hip to shoulder separation with the golf swing than you can with the baseball swing. Meaning, like yeah, no, you're I, able to twist your trunk more than when you, you, what you yeah, can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I, might, I might be able to show you something a little bit later on off camera mm -hmm. that, that you might, you might be able to change that thinking, cool. right? Yeah. Okay, so anyhow, you're in external rotation, right? The, the first thing is that translation, translation into a firm left side, and they can, they'll be able to feel it right there. What is that supposed to feel like, right? That's supposed to feel like it's not moving yet, right? And then, as you come, I really know how to swing a bat, so, but that wall is impeding me, right? Right, coming up and out like that, correct? Right. right? You getting all this? Yes, sir. All right, good. So, pitching, what can we do for pitching? Back leg drive, so you're starting in the lateral position. Same thing, you're, you're holding torsion just like in hitting, where it's that external rotation. Um, then as you go down the mound, you're going into hip abduction. And then as you drive, you peek into hip extension and internal rotation. Okay, all right. So um, let's just talk about um, the, the motion around the right ankle here, all okay. right? So when you're on, on the the rubber, mm -hmm. right? If you're if you're not pitching from a from a uh, <coughs> from a, a uh, 
stretch uh, or the wind up? A stretch, okay, so when you're in the wind up, right, you're going like this, but right here, you should get the ankle to just pretty much the same position as a stretch, right? Okay, okay so let's just talk about stretch since we get the camera straight on uh -huh. right there. The big thing is to load into, and I don't know how you guys teach it, but, but the, the very big thing, just like uh, Steven Strasberg told me, right, is not to let that ankle roll back mm -hmm. like that, especially as a fatigue. So with this, you can easily teach those muscles what they're supposed to do in that position, right? Right, and you can make it very proximal to where you're working with a kid, let's say a, a 14 year old, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, do that about 10 times. Now step on the rubber and feel can what that, that feels like. Sure. Yeah. So you're just getting on. Yeah. Come in. Oh my goodness, you feel that in your hips. Yeah. A lot. Mm -hmm. So you're working a muscle in the inside arch, actually called the posterior tibialis, uh -huh. okay? And if you hold it for about five seconds, that's as much exercise as you can get. Now, Ooh. cameraman, I want you to, to, um, I want you to, to uh, focus in on, on all the shaking that's going on up here. Oh, yeah. This is a highly trained professional athlete right here. Okay? You see that? Oh, yeah. This yeah. is awesome. So you do this against the wall, and you focus on getting the, the pelvic tilts, getting into well, a... Well, no, you can do it, you can do it like, like this, this, you can do it against, against the wall. wall. It's just for, um, against the wall is, is for general body conservation, injury reduction, activation, recovery. This is uh -huh. more sport specific right here. Hmm. That's awesome. So do you ever do it, like, can you do anything where you get into a more full stride with just one of them? Like if you're working on oh, the yeah, back, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Try to lift your, your knees up right now if you're doing that and see how free it is to come up. Oh yeah. That's the one thing I felt when I was at... Uh, yeah, so put them against the wall like we had them. Okay. Okay, so uh, it's gonna be um, the, the little side toward. And put this, and it's gonna be, yeah. so it's gonna be the uh, very uh, smallest side oh, I see. Okay. and it's going to be whoever's using it it's going to be the width of their foot away from the wall okay so if it's like um let me think of somebody it's just like shack right mm -hmm. it might be this far far away right, from the wall because right. that's how you know and it generally correlates the width of the foot generally correlates with the, the uh, height of the person okay mm -hmm. so now what we're going to do and and by the way um, thrust is, is extremely important in, in any um, uh, power sport, okay? And in any, any thrust sport, whether it be box, box like you're throwing a punch, mm -hmm. or you're throwing a football, or you're hitting, right. or, you're, or you're throwing a pitch, right? Any, any of those, your pelvis is going to rock upward like that, and that's what creates a really fast stop of the core and then everything else has to rotate around the whole core which creates the speed mm -hmm. right okay so um anyhow so in hitting it's like that right mm -hmm. so this this exercise right here is specifically for thrust rotate your hips inward this time don't do anything with your pelvis mm -hmm. hold it just like you were out there, all right? And then what we're gonna do is you're gonna keep the top of your tailbone, it's kind of shaped like this. Mm -hmm. Keep the top of it on the wall, and you, can you visualize what the very bottom of it looks like? It's a little tip mm -hmm. called the coccyx. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna point your coccyx at me as far forward and as high as you can get. It. Just point it at my hand when you get out here, okay? Uh, 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 well, let's go back, go back, go back. Sorry. No problem. This is the law of primacy. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to teach you how to get get on here from the first. Okay. Okay. So everybody that you ever get on here, with hands on the wall, put one foot in the middle of the machine. Okay. And then stand on like okay. that. Step off exactly the same way. Hands on the wall. Got right. It. Never would want to create an ankle rotation problem here. by stepping on the wrong way. Go ahead. Perfect. Awesome. Good, right? Now, 
Don't do anything here yet. Mm -hmm. Don't do, just relax, okay. okay? Turn your hips in as far as they can go. You can relax your arms now. Just okay. relax, okay? Now, feel this, keep that on the wall. Mm -hmm. Now point your coccyx at my hand. There you go. One, two, three, four, five. Keep your hips where, you are, where they are, relax. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five. Relax. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five. Relax. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five. Relax. Look at me with your eyes and put, point your coccyx exactly where your eyes are. One, two, three, four. Relax. Now, keep your hips turned in as far as you can. Now do that same thing that you just did in the speed of swinging a baseball bat. There you go. And relax. Do that five times. Good. Good job. Perfect. Awesome. Good. Yeah. Relax. It's good. Yeah. Thank you. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next thing for um, shoulders. Now, let's talk about forearm strength first, okay? <coughs> so, if you're going to just train only the forearms, right? right. Uh, it's kind of hard to do because the shoulder always wants to help, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to keep your elbow on your side, like that, and you're going to put that just like so, and mm -hmm. you're going to turn that out as far as you can with just your forearm, okay. right? Then you're going to have a little bit more range of motion if you add your wrist. So this is for like, for throwers, this would be like <coughs> supination to pronate. <coughs> when we're throwing, you supinate and pronate. Um, that's going to happen uh, apt actually most from your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Although it's your forearm, right. it's going to happen mostly from, from your shoulder, but this is to strengthen that, that motion, okay? okay? And, and, and actually strengthen the snap in a, what do you call it the, these days, screwball? In a screwball oh, yeah, or the, a curveball? When you right? say the, that's, that's the pronation, that's what we're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, exactly, okay. So anyhow, it's going to look like this right here. Yep. And I'm going to turn outward with just my forearm and hold it for five. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to use my forearm and wrist, and I got a little bit more. Okay. And then I can eke out just a little bit more using the muscles of my hand, like that. Okay. Right. So that's 15 seconds. So then forearm, five seconds, and then forearm wrist, five seconds, and forearm wrist hand, mm -hmm. five seconds. Got it. Okay. Is it kind of too like? Are you trying to work like isometric contractions where you can kind of let it go a little bit farther? Yeah, as you that's called post isometric relaxation, mm -hmm. post isometric release. This whole program is built around right. that. An isometric release or isometric contraction hold holds mm -hmm. build strong, fast muscles faster than any other method. Mm -hmm. Any other method. Okay. okay? Yeah. Got it? Now walk forward a little bit more. Good. There you go. Hold that elbow there. Now turn outward with just your forearm. Good. One, two, three, four five, a little bit with wrist, one, two, three, four, five, and as far as you can, Ooh, wrist and head, awesome. doesn't matter, go ahead and turn out, one, two, three, four, five, good job, now keep that, the, your shoulder is going to really want to help, right. now you got to keep that from happening, mm -hmm. turn inward, one, two, three, four, Five, a little bit of wrist, and when that yeah, when that elbow it. comes apart, you know your shoulder is is this one's uh, a lot harder than the other. Yeah, it is, and and what is that? That would be pronation, the pronation right? right? Okay, and then turn in more. Ooh, Good job. There we go. And relax. Good. All right. Perfect. That's good. And obviously, you would do that both ways. Okay? Right. Next thing is uh, shoulder, and that first exercise I showed you guys with the five, mm -hmm. right? That that brings in a lot of shoulder okay okay no in all five positions actually mm. because because you're turning against that upper arm right right, right? uh here's another one for shoulder and i'm i'm kind of uh leaning toward closed chain 
rather than open chain, but this is a good one for shoulder here. You turn in external rotation, just like that, with the shoulder. So right. my hand is completely relaxed, my forearm's completely relaxed, my upper arm's completely relaxed, and I'm turning with just my shoulder. I'm gonna hold for five, then I'm gonna turn more, five, and turn more for five. Hmm. Okay, so let's get it set up right. Okay, start here. Okay. Good. Now go all the way as back. Close, pack that position right there. There you go. Now you're good. Okay, you can you can leave that uh that um, flexed. Okay. Flex, huh? Now with these muscles right here, mm -hmm. turn outward. Good. Try not to let your body move too much. One, two, three, four, five. Turn more. One, two, three, four. Five. Turn more. One, two, three, four, five. And relax. Good I like job. that. Yeah, so do I. I like yeah. it a lot. Okay. So the next one would be that's uh, open chain. Okay. Okay, so this would be the closed chain. I really I really like this one a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have a, a spot just below your uh, sternum and you pull that all the way back. See what's happening with my shoulders? My shoulder yeah. blades are coming together. It's got to my be. shoulders are back. Right. Right. Now, the next thing, if we would do that, it would do us good, but what we want to do is we want to pull with the lower trap straight down. Okay, so we've got correction. Uh, everybody has problems with their shoulders right. forward, up, and in, right? Mm -hmm. So we're correcting all of those at once, mm -hmm. right? We're bringing them back, down, and out. Okay, down, pull down, and then you're going to try to put your right elbow into your right back pocket mm -hmm. okay hold for three seconds each way okay okay come away from all come away from all, all the way all, all the way, way. All there way. you go now pull that back yep. good walk to the wall get your feet right underneath you good now pull down with your lower oh whoa whoa, whoa. Oops, pull down with your lower traps down there you go that's the position right there okay, okay. now stick that elbow hold that position stick that elbow go as far as you can and down good and relax okay do that again always reset because this is a hard one to keep in right. position good good pull down pull back very good good awesome and so for when you guys are working with kids or young athletes that's, that's fine right there, okay. okay? When you guys are working with young athletes, you can get them into the exact position you want to get them into, and you can work them in slow motion against a strong resistance, and they're gonna be able to learn those positions really, really quickly mm -hmm. without having to pay attention to the other six things that they're supposed to be right. doing at once, okay. right? Now, elbow. Um, so we've, uh, I would always, pay, if, if I'm doing anything with the elbow, I'm always training the core first, the shoulder second, the forearm third, and then elbow. Okay. Okay. So, um, I don't want to get too deep in, into medical here, but but UCL uh, may or may not happen no matter what you do. Okay. It no matter no matter what sort of training you do, it may or may not happen. Right. But to give Meaning it a injury. Yes, a UCL. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like Tommy John. Right. Right. So. Um, but if you give it the most support that it can possibly have, the chances of are it less, happening right. are much less, right? So this is, um, and we have a uh, we have a, a great endorsement from the world's leading hand and wrist surgeon from uh, uh, Hospital of Special, Special Surgeries, Dr. Andy, Andy Weiland mm -hmm. in New York about this ex this specific exercise. Okay. He really likes that we get it both in flexion and extension at the same time okay. okay so you start here just like that right right and then you're going to turn outward and then you're going to straighten your elbow so right now we're stretching the muscles that we call golfer's elbow and tennis elbow and biceps tendon mm -hmm. all right Sorry, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have released. Then you bend the elbow a little bit more, and you go a little bit more, and you stretch more, mm. right? Okay. And then you go a little bit more, and then you stretch more. Okay. Okay. The only thing I had wrong here 
is I want to put this up just like so, okay? Mm -hmm. A little bit higher, my hand a little tiny bit higher than the edge of my shoulder, okay? So, straight on, right, right there. Come back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now bring that elbow down. Down, yeah, down. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, just so you would you would rotate in. in uh, excuse me. Externally rotate your shoulder toward that point. Hold that. Okay. Rotate your shoulder first externally to where your elbow points down. Okay. That that little tip. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Good. Now watch. Watch me. Okay. okay so. Right here, it's out. He's pointing toward him, mm -hmm. and now I, I rotate it. Got it. Okay. Mm. Good. Other way. Other Does way? Go down. All the way. There you go. You okay. got it. All right. Okay. Now rotate outward with your forearm. Good. And relax. Okay. okay. Now, there you go. All the way. Okay. Don't keep on turning. Just okay. stretch. One, two, three, four, five. Hold that. Bend ever so slightly. Turn more. Good. One, two, three, four, five. Hold that. Bend ever so slightly. And turn a little bit more. And go. One, two, oh, yeah. three, four, five. Now don't stop. Come back to neutral. Make sure that this stays downward. Mm -hmm. Rotate your shoulder inward. There you go. Now we're going to do the really hard part. This is going to be hard. Okay. Let that bend. Now rotate inward. Don't see what's happening. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. shoulder wants to play. Okay. You got. You got it. Now straighten. One, two, three, four, five. Again, turn inward. Good. That's right. And straighten. Straighten. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Good. And turn inward. Good. And straighten. One, two, three, four. Five. Got it? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah. I like that. Great. There's a thousand more things I can show you, but yeah. that's that's the gist of it. So right? the big one for us, like, is the hip stuff. I really like all of that, mm -hmm. um, but getting the hips to open up. So a lot of times we have guys with internal rotation problems. That's why I love that one you were showing me. Yeah. So are you having a lot of success just getting guys to really open up their hips and so, that range so of motion? are you saying that they have too much internal rotation they have too little most guys will come in yes. like like uh, so they're FAI. actually rotated yeah yeah absolutely okay yeah. there is another group especially with young kids now would you take off walking that way okay. see how he's internally rotated mm -hmm. that's as good as you can get come on back if if i had a kid i would probably <laughs> in in the old days i would have probably been uh uh <coughs> been really uh, concerned that they were walking pigeon toe. Mm -hmm. That's as an athletic a walk as you can possibly get right mm -hmm. there. I've never met him, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I was noticed so when we walk walk in, mm -hmm. right? So if you're talking about that, yeah, these exercises are perfect for that. Right. It's another problem too, is that they have too much internal rotation. It's hypermobility, mm -hmm. right? But and this will this will resonate with you, I know. Okay. Is here, say, say this is optimal range of motion right here. Right. Okay. Strong, fast athletes, most of the time, if this is the top end range of motion right here, we'll only have about that much. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that'll cause them problem with, with uh, stiffness and uh, injury. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> There's other people that have this much. And that will cause a lot of problems Instability. with stability right. and injury. Uh -huh. So my idea is with the people that don't have enough, create the more range of motion which you could do really, really quickly right. on these machines. Okay. And then the other part of that is if they don't have an, uh, enough stability and they have too much range of motion, then fill that in with strength. Right. And, then they're, and then everybody's going to be equal. Mm -hmm. Right. So this kind of works on both of them then, for both sides of the population. Like if they're, Absolutely. So yep. would you do mm -hmm. it differently for a guy who has a lot of mobility? Is he going to be holding for longer to create yep. the stability? Mm -hmm. yeah. for, for example, okay, so when I was in practice and I got um, for, um, I don't want to uh, be gender specific, but most people with hypermobility are ladies, mm -hmm. okay? Um, 
So anyhow, I would say, okay, your normal range of motion and in internal rotation of the hip is supposed to be 35 degrees, mm -hmm. but right now, you've got 60 degrees, right? right? But then they get on here like this, mm. and they can't turn to 10. Mm. So we That's know the right. problem. If they have 60 degrees of range of motion, mm -hmm. they should be able to turn to 60, right? Right. Now I can turn to just about my normal, mm -hmm. but that's all I all I need because that's the normal. It's a cool right, assessment right? tool, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, try it, go on and try the internal rotation. You teach and him hold it, oh, oh, hold oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You teach him how to get yeah, on. Yeah, so when you get on, <laughs> come to the wall, <laughs> hands against the wall, butt against the wall. That's to keep you one step on, on something moving, right? Here, here. Yeah. And then you get off the same way you got on. And you also have to check your feet, make sure that this is like That's fine. Good, All right? Okay, so go back to neutral. All right, so what we're going to do first is you're going to point your coccyx at my hand. Good. Perfect. Okay? And you're, what, hold on, don't turn anything. Make sure your back is flat on the wall and very slowly turn your hips as far as you can go. We're going to count to ten. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Don't relax, okay? Flatten your back more against the wall. Point your, I, I know, point your toxic more at me, and then turn in more. One. It's because you're using a specific group of muscles over another uh, set, and you have to re-engage those to your brain, right? Good. Perfect. Right? And then last one. Don't don't move a muscle. Don't don't rotate your hips or anything like that. Just point your toxic at me, and then turn it as much as you can. Hold it for another ten. One, two, three, four, five. Keep it up. Six, seven. Keep up that hip work. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. Okay. So what I can tell you, you just mentioned assessment tool, and that's that's uh, really key. Um, good good thinking. Right? And good exercise. Um, yeah, but. But assessment tool for sure. Yeah. All right. Okay. So step off. Because I can you sit off. here and I can get, I can put in that position, you know, in posterior tilts, tilts. Yeah. Yep. And then see how far we go in, and then we get our measurement right there. Yeah. Right. So step off, and I want to tell you some things about it. All right. Good. So what I can tell about you, right? Okay. Is that hold on. What I can tell about you is at first you kind of had trouble figuring out what to do. That's number one. So I know right now that your brain's disconnected to some pretty important muscles for baseball and golf and, and life, right? The next thing is your brain started catching on to this really, really quickly, right? And, and these guys can tell you, you were getting to about 20 mm -hmm. at first, and then you finally got up to 30. Your brain was kicking in more synergy to the muscles, mm -hmm. but you weren't able to hold it. So I know that those muscles not only only are disengaged, but they were fatigued yeah. after 30 seconds, right? Yeah. Good. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really powerful. And then we can go externally. No, you can't. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a, uh, you can go externally when you have these away from the wall. Uh, you guys familiar with the fascial system? Mm -hmm. Okay, so so the fascial system, if it is really tight, all and it's going to be tight throughout, like uh, thoracolumbar fascia is going to be the main core component of fascia, right? right? Okay, so the tighter, tighter that is, the more it's going to force the pelvis downward. Actually, it's going to pull the back of the pelvis upward, mm -hmm. right? It's going to force the hips outward. It's going to force the shoulders forward. You don't want to reinforce yeah, exactly that. right. So this is, this is a exact opposite view of what is happening. So I'm gonna stretch out the thoracolumbar fascia and then I'm gonna turn inward. Now, if you wanna get out like this, away from the wall, and don't hold your pelvis, then you can do anything that you want to in external rotation. It's just that the whole system no, was it makes built. Sense. It makes yeah, sense. the whole system was built around releasing the, 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 the entire fascia of the body. Okay? That's awesome. I think it's really powerful. I mean Hip rotation is a big part of any type of rotational sport. And, you know, hitting, very rotational, pitching has a lot of linear components, but rotation is another, is a big piece of it too. So, <laughs> just, just to get your thoughts, what you're working on here. 
I'm just going into external rotation. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yep. you're right. Control. You can see that he's relaxing. He's yeah, exactly. Right. He's on yeah. Loading. Yeah. Just don't do pelvic thrusts as you're right. doing that. Right. Okay. okay. Because we, a lot of guys, so biomechanically in pitching, the yep. more internal rotation you can get in your legs, the more your hips will rotate because you're moving in that direction. So as we take our momentum forward, yep. the more we can turn this inward, the, obviously the moment where we want to rotate our hips, the more our hips will open. If I don't, if, my, if this leg only turns this much, this hip's not going to really come around. Correct. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Is... Um, my question would be, how much of that, right, is uh, moving against the force of the ankle, right, and then driving, and and then driving with the ankle downward, like the ankle. Yeah, well, I'm a big believer in force production. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I believe the initial fall in the pitching delivery is just gravity taking you forward, but then there's a moment where you accelerate off the ground, and and that helps unload into internal rotation. That helps push your whole pelvis into rotation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there, there's a big interaction with the ground, but but what we believe, and it's perfectly aligned with this, is the more we're in torsion, counter, we, yeah, counter yeah, 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 yeah. we have now stability to push into the ground. And if, if you have a kid like this and, and he's about to land, you're not going to get much acceleration or drive out of that leg. Yes, yeah. much force. For sure. So we're always yeah. teaching them to stay in torsion, stay counter rotated. And that also at the, will give you more stability to create the force production. But it's an unloading, right? If I tighten externally, I'm going to unload internally, which supports the hip rotation. Yeah. So, so, so um, this might make sense. For me. So in golf, to get the most power, the most, right? What I want to do is I want to. Preset and during my backswing, I want to externally rotate my left hip mm -hmm. and internally rotate my right. Watch what happens with my feet. Mm -hmm. Right? So, you, I'm sure you do, so I'm not even going to ask. Okay? So, we're, we're thinking about um, rotation around the X plane. Those mm -hmm. are all your stabilizers. Those are the ones that you use when you're, when you're sprinting, um, you know, when you're, when you're running that way, when you're cycling, when you're swimming. Those, those are the ones we call the prime movers. But in baseball, now the rotators are your prime movers, right? So we need to be able to teach these to be stabilizers during that, right? Is that correct? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, the only thing is like with golf is more like hitting for baseball. When you get into pitching, you become a lot more multi -planier. So like the sagittal movement at the end, yeah. this movement is huge to velocity. So the rotation helps you get into yeah, that so, position. So, so you're, you're actually using what, your left external oblique? Well, for stability, but the front leg is going to stabilize in external rotation. Mm -hmm. You're going to resist the internal. Mm -hmm. The oblique will stabilize, but there's going to be a huge posterior chain to decelerate your trunk because all that posterior. momentum is in your trunk. Exactly. We're talking about exactly the same thing. Okay. Right. So, so anyhow, like that, mm -hmm. and then and then the people that really hit it big, they do like that in the in the more swing. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, but the the what I wanted to 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 show you is what's happening in the feet. So this is this is actually happening on a different plane than, yeah, that, than these. Supinating, pronating, right? Yeah, I'd call it XYZ planes, okay, but yeah. yeah. Um, or sag just like you would use sagittal, then coronal, then transverse. Right? Okay. The only difference is with pitching, because that is that is right on the line with golf, but with pitching, this leg's in the air, Yeah. and before this one lands, we actually kick that one through. Yeah, internal get, rotation. So you're as actually, far, as far as you can go. You actually, I mean, you're not really like squishing the bug, but your foot's coming up on its mm -hmm. toe. This one's landing about 20 degrees closed to create good stability index for rotation. Mm -hmm. That's the only difference is your feet are kind of doing that. It's almost, it's a little bit like a jump, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the and, Ra and Randy Johnson had the ultimate jump, right? Well, he can he can kill a, kill a uh, Have you seen the Arliss Chapman, the yeah. the closer? He's yeah. Um, but he could kill a uh, seagull from oh, sixty saw. feet away. <laughs> he can explode a seagull yeah. from sixty feet away. Cut in right. that cool. cliff. So right. any, anyhow, cliff. Uh, yeah, not like I think we're we're getting into like really really minute semantics here between golf and, and baseball. But the the real question is how can you how can you use that 
the terrain. Well, tons of ways. So it's yeah. an assessment tool. It's uh, a mobility tool for people that can't Oh, stabilize. I didn't show you the most important one. You guys got a, uh, some sort of a pole in here? Paddle work. A paddle work. We got those uh, yeah, yeah, dowels over there. The dowel work? Yeah, dowel work. Fine. It doesn't matter if it's heavy. It doesn't. There you go. Not, not heavy. All right, so we're going to get into the light for this one there, cameraman. You can use your, uh, our, what do you call it, backlight, front light? What? Come on, cinematographer. Talk your language. I'm not a lighting specialist. You should be. <laughs> With the camera. That's so a whole other job. You'll be able to see, the people will be able to see this better, right? You're right. Okay. Oh, that had good lighting right there, though, from that. Kogi. Okay, so let's just see, like if you would hold this just like so. Keep your feet just like they normally are, okay. right? And then turn as far as you can like that, and as far as you can this way. With my hips neutral? Yeah, just hold that You've down. seen these before? Yeah, I've seen okay. these before. I think so, yeah. Good, all right, and good. All right, let me take a picture of that. Can y'all go just to ABCA? What's that? Do y'all you go, go to the ABCA with these? Adult Baseball Coach Association? No. You should. Um, okay. You got it? Okay. Turn as far as you can. Turn dead. Turn brother. Okay? And then the other one. Turn. Okay. So we're getting into a lot of thoracic right there, right? Watch this. Okay. Step onto these. Here, use this like just for law of primacy. Okay. Use that to have Stay stability to step on. Okay, that's a little bit too wide for you, so step back off. So for, so for you, so if you had a set of these, right, okay. then you'd kind of know now that it's about two width of your feet, okay? You got it. Perfect. Step back on. Now you're, the, you're smart about Oops. posterior uh, isometric relaxation. Mm -hmm. Okay, watch this, All right? This is the this is the best exercise ever invented in the history of the universe. Okay. Yeah. I, I guarantee you that. Okay. Good. Good. Perfect. Bend over in a baseball stance. Good. Now, with your right obliques, right okay. at the bottom here, I want you to turn. Here, you know what? It'd be better for me to show you a real quick okay. example than to try to teach you while you're on it. Okay? This is the one that you were saying uh, will kind of help you rethink about the golf swing compared to the baseball swing about the rotation. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to turn around here. Okay. Now, watch the end of this stick. Okay. All right? I'm going to turn as far as I can with these muscles right here. So that's, that would be my internal oblique making that turn, right? Okay? okay. Then I'm going to turn. I'm gonna, that stick isn't going to move, and I'm going to turn my foot and hip, my right foot and hip inward, posterior. I'm, I'm in an isometric contraction right now. I'm going to hold it for about three seconds. I'm relaxed. Now watch this. Then I'm going to turn more. And I'm going to relax. I'm going to turn more. And then I'm going to relax. I'm going to turn more. Then I'm going to relax. I'm going to turn more. And I'm going to turn more. Okay? Stretching your um, external rotators? Like your Not rotators. stretching. Post isometric release. So what I'm doing is I'm isometrically contracting. Uh, I'm, I'm isometrically contracting the internal oblique, which is Reciprocally releasing my external obliques and reciprocally releasing my piriformis. Okay. What? Yeah. Are you serious? That's pretty dope. Cody Hall needs that. Right. So now you're externally rotating on this side as opposed to. Uh, I would. you You were. Um, well, no, I see. Never it mind. Depends you're going, on your you're going internal. It depends on your reference point. Mm -hmm. So always do the turn after like some people turn in their hip and their foot okay. and then they forget it at that but the last one should be a turn okay got it yes sir i've seen this somewhere this is killing me okay all right now with these muscles right here turn as far as you can go let your feet relax good now look at your stick Look at the end of the stick. Don't let that come through my hand. Turn your right hip and put in one, two, three. Release. Turn more. Good. 
Turn your right foot and hip inward. One, two, three. Release. Turn more. Turn your right foot and hip inward. One, two, three. And release. Okay? Now, go the other way. Good. Now, right, left foot. One, two, three. Release. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got to release, let your nervous system reset, and then turn. Good. Turn your, turn inward. Release. Turn more. Good. Turn your left foot and hip inward. One, two, three. Release. And turn. And that's good. All right. Now, step back off. Let's take another picture. Turn as far as you can with the, to the right, just like you did the first time. And the other way. Okay, you guys want to come see? Cameraman. You okay with us showing him? Yeah, yeah, sir. Okay. There's your before. And there's your after. Is there's he allowed to let his hips move? He was doing the same thing both oh, ways. Okay. And there's your after. Mm -hmm. Right? So his his right knee is kicked in more there than it was at first. Yeah. That's because he's got more range of motion in the trunk. Mm -hmm. Right? So you weren't let on the first one, you weren't trying to keep your hips. You do it. I was trying to I was both times I was trying to keep my hips here. It's just when I can turn <laughs> come more up, come up here. this is this is, this is right, right? Yeah, hold a little bit higher. Little bit higher. <laughs> and then a baseball <laughs> Okay, a little bit more bent over here. Okay. <coughs> hold on a second. And I can let my hips go as far as I do, want. Do whatever you want to do, okay. except for keep your feet flat on the ground. Okay. And go. Okay, so that, that I wouldn't accept, right? Because what you've done is you've completely put your weight over here on, on this side. Keep your spine neutral and rotate around your spine rather rather than letting your whole body go to one side. There you go. Keep that keep that on, on your on your shoulder. On your hard yeah. There you go. Keep your elbows down is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Good. Go ahead and turn turn as far as you can. Is that it? Mm hmm Okay. Good. And then the other way. Keep your rotate around your spine. Perfect. Good. All right. Now step on, use the pole to get on. Oh, use the pole. Oh, okay. I know you guys don't have to, but when you're teaching other people right. to do okay. it, cool. right, good. Okay, you ready? Just relax. Go? Just relax. Okay, relax. Just get a little bit more. A little bit of a bend. Yeah. And not, not so much. Okay. okay, right around there, turn to your right. There you go. Now, look at this, the end of the pole, never let it move back toward me. There you go. And relax. Look at this. Okay, turn in. One, two, don't let it turn. Three, and one. One, two, three, relax. And turn. I'm getting a little bit lazy at the end. So I get, get, meaning I keep my eye on it. Just don't let it touch my hand. Oh, don't let it touch your hand. Turn in. One, two, three, relax. And turn. Good. All right? Yeah. Somebody want to take, put a time clock on how long this takes? About 20 seconds each side, right? A little bit more forward. Okay. Now this time you're going to turn around this way. Good. Now turn your head to the right and look at this. Don't let that come back toward me. Now turn your hip in. One, two, three. Relax first. Relax oh, yeah, yeah. first. Don't let it. Don't let it. Relax that foot. There you go. Now turn. There you go. And turn. Turn in. What would your hip into? One, two. Three, don't move. Relax that. Now turn. Okay, so it's post isometric relaxation, right. not right. not not go as soon as it right. happens, right? So it's Good. And turn. Turn, 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 turn. Oh. Good. Now turn your foot in. Hip in. One, two, three. Release. And turn. Yeah. There you go. Because you're right? getting okay. Now step off. Yep. Now we'll take more pictures of you. Rotate as far as you can around your spine. Okay. Okay. Go. Keep up. 
You came back like 20 degrees. Rotate as far as you can. Keep on going. All right. The other way. That's all you got? Yeah. All right. Okay. So you didn't get you didn't get. Well, I wasn't letting my hips like go all what the way. What were you doing the first time? That, like you said, I was just trying to oh, rotate. Oh, sorry. Rotate around the spine. Yeah. So like the first one, I let like in Kahoe's, Kahoe's picture, it looks like you, the hips were, you let them move. You can move your hips. If the only thing is, is I didn't want, you, you look like Ben Hogan. You're familiar with Ben Hogan? Mm. Right? <laughs> so anyhow, as he went, he was like that. So oh, as, I see. you guys agree that that's how he was? Yeah. yeah. You were like that, right? Mm -hmm. Your hips and, and ankles and feet move. Okay. Right? Just like that. I see what you're saying. Okay, so see my hips, ankles, and feet are moving, mm -hmm. but I'm rotating with my linearly, I mean with my with my spine straight up and down. Okay, so like you'd be to stretching like you said, the piriformis, the oblique. Releasing. Well, Better stretch, word. Which, you're right, stretch. Better word. Stress release, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. What's your uh, doctor name? Um, I do a lot of stuff. I, uh, I'm a chiropractor. Neuromuscular therapist, performance enhancement specialist. I teach biomechanics, or taught biomechanics, um, uh, flexibility specialist, and five techniques. And you're out of Opelousas? Yeah, 190. Yeah, the whole way. All the way. Yeah. Right? Cool. I've seen, I've seen it somewhere. Did so you developed it? I invented it and developed it, and for the last 10 years, and been, you patented uh, it? talking about. It. Yeah. Wow. Are well, you going to break my patent? <laughs> I was a Navy SEAL for 22 years, and I, didn't, and I know how to punish. I bet you did. <laughs> well, my dad raised me in the Navy. I respect the Navy. Cool. Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Lacaz. Uh, I just work with these excellent baseball trainers here, and you can find me at rotexmotion.com, and that's R O T E X motion.com. And Rotex stands for rotational exercise. 